Okay. Um, it's at this point in the show we normally hand over to a strapping gentleman who frequents the programme. We're not going to do that just now. We're going to go to another strapping gentleman by the name of Balint Sabo, who has joined us in, uh, in the studio. You're a, an opera singer from Hungary, and you're going to be performing in Moscow on Sunday on the Bluebeard's Castle Opera. And this is all part of the first international opera festival called Opera a Priori. And I mentioned your physique, because the first thing I want to ask you is, does it help being a very big gentleman with big lungs? Is that important? For it's a uh, physical appearance is very important also as a view and also as a voice, uh, the quantity of the voice, not the quality. But I know also very small, tiny singers with tremendously big voices, and I also know average people with 200 cages who have very tiny voices. So it's, uh, but normally, uh, yes, it's important to have big lungs and uh, big resonance boxes, mm -hmm. also head and also the chest. It's always interesting for the viewer because sometimes you can never guess what you're um, going to get. The one thing that uh, I know about um, your pati the, the particular day that you're going to be performing is that it's experimental opera, something that is quite new for the Moscow stage where everyone's used to um, the classics. And um, even within uh, opera a priori, this is going to be the only soiree where it's going to be all about um, experimental opera. Can you? Tell me what is experimental opera because I'm, I'm not acquainted. Yes, uh, the creator of this uh, whole festival, Elena Harakidzian, uh, she named this concert intellectual opera. Mm -hmm. Yes, what is not just about uh, normal operas, what the people just love story, little politics, little intrigue, little blasphemy, a and uh, somebody <laughs> dies on the end, and that's it. So the world is so we know from the beginning what we get. Mm -hmm. This is this uh, two concerts, the Bluebeards. It's uh, it's also uh, many many. Uh, stories inside uh, the uh, also the fox tale about mm -hmm. a very bad man with a blue beard who just catching many women and uh, kill them to the end but also the analysis of the uh, human uh, relationships uh, men and women relationships and mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the music itself it's very very expressive it's like a movie music so it's uh, it actually you cannot get anything out from this music as also as Bartox and also the Kurbatov opera the Chekhov it's it's also a uh, psychological drama. It's not just a simply uh, urban legend, what, uh, what we used to get in opera uh, concerts or opera shows. I'm sorry, can I just quickly follow up? I wanted to ask you, but when you say it's movie music, is it more like sounds that accompany um, whatever's going on, or is, is there a melody? It's, it? it's a very, it's a, first a great melody, but mm -hmm. it's still contemporary music. It's very expressive. Mm -hmm. So it's not just beautiful lines and beautiful melodies. That's also the, for the listener. It's a very, it creates a great expression own ideas or own expression of this music so it's not, uh, you can interpret how you want this music not just I put you some melody and you yeah. it just in one way mm -hmm. you can get it so am I understand this right it sounds a bit like jazz in a way in the sense that there's a lot of individuality Correct. to this in any way can you improvise when you're doing these performances no. No, this is, in a way, in it's a very strict music, it. yes, because uh, Bartok uh, has a very, very crazy idea, and his sonority and the musicality of this music, it's, uh, it's, it's his own crazy uh, craziness, and it's so expressive, and all these moods and atmospheres was during the drama, it's happening, it's expressed in each tonality, in each chord, in each uh, movement uh, sonority what's happening, so it's, it's impossible to improvise. Is really. this something that is um, going to work? with the sort of classical entourage of um, the conservatoire? Yes, it's perfectly. It's uh, mm -hmm. one of the best uh, music and one of the best Hungarian operas and the most played. And now it's very trendy to play it also mm -hmm. financial-wise because it needs just two solists. So normally yeah. opera, it's, uh, it's a disaster financially because you cannot pay it. It's a big orchestra, big chorus, a huge solists, uh, big names, uh, many, many people. Mm -hmm. And this is with two people a bass and a mezzo soprano, so you can do it as a chamber version. The concert works very well because the music, it's, uh, even if it's no sets, even if it's no lights, just you hear the music, you close your eyes, you can see the movie. Mm. So it's, uh, it's very, uh, very often played now. Fantastic. Now we know that you have to have a fantastic voice, of course, to be an opera singer, but how important um, is it to be a good actor as well? If you find somebody who's got a fantastic voice Correct. and is quite shy, how difficult or how important is it to then get them to really use the physical side of the performance? It's uh, now because I'm singing in Germany a lot, so we call in Germany Regie Theater, yes, when you have to be an actor. 
-hmm. So it's most how you look like, it's very important. So you cannot uh, be this 200 kg uh, very slow moving singer. Uh, you have to move, you have to act. So it's more demanding in, uh, in Western theatres, of course, that you have to uh, be a great actor as well. Mm -hmm. Many, many uh, stage directors, they prefer a less good singer, but a better actor. Because for the drama and for the expression on the stage, for the live show, mm -hmm. for many people, also for the audience, it's a more important. A lot of people important. who go to, to, to experience the opera, not just to listen Correct. to it. Yes. And, and, they, and they want all the costumes to be there yes. and the music. Um, is, this intellectual opera, uh, is it a challenge with, um, do you think the Moscow public is ready for something like it this? It is ready. And uh, I think uh, in Moscow, I'm very honored to be here. It is the uh, greatest culture producer in the world, the best musicians, the greatest musicians, singers, pianists, violinists, whatever, they are coming from this country, uh, many of them, so it's, uh, I think it's ready. But it's a new thing, what is not just Mozart, Vivaldi, and we are used to hear, it's something what it's more, to, and for the gourmet uh, musicians and the gourmet people, I think is the best solution to listen to this uh, concert, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Now, I think I'm having a little spell of, of voice envy right here, because you, you've got this wonderful, you know, rich, deep voice, which I wish I had for TV. It's very useful when you're in a studio <laughs> or on the stage. Do you um, have any kind of exercises that you do that perhaps I could borrow? Uh, well, every day, uh, one hour of uh, vocalizing to find your voice position. And it's not just about a native talent, what many people have. It uh, takes a lot of study, so it's... Uh, Can you give me like a really simple thing I could do at home, just to... Raw eggs. War warm it Raw up eggs doesn't work. Raw eggs, eggs is just uh, who likes eggs, but <laughs> I'm not, uh, it doesn't help at all. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, first of all, it's no smoking. It's the very important. And also, it's uh, the, uh, the big, deep breath. Mm -hmm. Yes, so men, this is very wrong because oh. the man, the woman stomach. by nature dips low, uh -huh. breath low, man dips breath here, Puffs up yes, like a just frog. with chest. Mm. So it's completely wrong, so you have to concentrate uh, on the belt to breathe, okay. and then it's, uh, it's a big resonance, and then you can speak like this, yes, it's very impressive. Try it. Okay, I will try. Yeah, but if you put a little, <laughs> little bit of uh, the, the voice uh, here, yeah, <laughs> doesn't help because mm -hmm. it hits your vocal cords. See, th th this is a, it's a science as well. It's Correct. It looks very easy, but... Uh, no, no, it really doesn't. Uh, my <laughs> mechanic <laughs> says <laughs> once when I was in Romania, uh, was, uh, he said I, said, I go to study in the United States, and he said, why do you study singing? I'm singing as well as a mechanic. When I drink a beer, I sing so much. Yes, you know, but it's a little bit different uh, when you start to sing three hours and also to not get tired. It's to sing a three hours opera mm -hmm. with a bluebeard, yeah. but it's really demanding vocally. You have to have a great exercise. Is it, is it easy to, I mean, I hear about this in the news with, with uh, opera singers. Is it easy to damage your voice? Yes, it's very easy. It's a wrong step. Uh, Karayan made a record with a soprano mm -hmm. for a Tosca and she lost her voice. She made this one and only CD and she couldn't sing anything anymore. So if you take a wrong choice, you can destroy your voice Do you worry forever. about things like that? Because it's your livelihood. Uh, yes, but uh, because I'm a musician as well and I choose very carefully the roles what I sing. Mm. Because what is not damaging, my voice is just a little bit damaging or what is something damaging, I take a longer break, two, three, four days after this heavy singing. Yeah. And then the voice, because it's two muscles, they are regenerating. What you did with Neil was absolutely fantastic. Do you teach or do you plan to at all? Uh, because I'm a very impatient person. Uh, it's very difficult because if the student doesn't react how I want, then I lose my So it's not really the right time, but uh, probably in age I will be ready to Maybe teach later. as well. Yes. I, I, would t I would take it you're probably very busy as well. <laughs> I hope so. I know that the, it took the organizers years to put together this um, uh, opera a priori because they started in 2011. It was very difficult to get yes. all these big names together. We uh, met with uh, the creator of this festival, with Elena Harkizian. We met mm -hmm. uh, in Paris first, and then we met in Milano when I was singing La Scala. And she came up with the idea to, uh, which was spoken about Chekhov, and to sing in Black Monk. And uh, the difficulty was, because I'm a bass, to sing, uh, to sell a bass to Russia, because there are many, many great basses here, it's like to sell a fridge for an Eskimo. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we were thinking that, uh, thinking that maybe it's not the best idea, and because my Russian is not so developed, to sing this Chekhov's dramatic text. That, uh, and my best is Hungarian, of course. Uh, she chose the Bluebeard mm -hmm. as uh, also new things, because in Russia it's rarely paid, and uh, many times with Russian singers, so it's not native Hungarian singers. 
singers, they are mm -hmm. singing this. So uh, she chose the Bluebeard, and it takes her a tremendous work and two years to put this all. But yes, to have Lesnyeva, to have uh, Jonas Kaufmann, to have Sumi Jo, this uh, kind of the highest level possible Absolutely. in opera business, it's, uh, it's a tremendous work to put all the things together. I'm very intrigued by listening to, to, to everything that you've said, and because it's taken such a long time to put this together, I'd like us just to give it one final sales push to, to really intrigue people as to why they should come and listen and, and, and watch this. Bluebeard's Castle, it sounded, just tell us a bit more about it, it sounds like it's quite a dark story. Yes, both are dark stories and uh, uh, well, if, uh, it's anyway, it's, uh, it's a mirror of a uh, man-woman relationship, yes. So there's all these seven doors, also some astrological meaning, so it's many, many weird things in this story. It's not a, a funny operetta, so I'm sure that uh, who's coming to see this uh, show, it will be not uh, be relieved or to go uh, happily and buy a chocolate after. Mm -hmm. It's something what, it's happened also with Bluebeard, we had in, uh, recently in Switzerland, with the London Symphony Orchestra and the, the audience it was not clutching yeah it was just a tremendous silence after mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's so shocking this music and so uh, that everybody has a different view so it's not a happy ending it's not a bad ending as well but it's it's so touching this music that it's not that uh, uh, standing sorry uh, I, I, t I get the sentiments and the feelings of what's going to happen uh, when um, all of it's going to actually be It's not be a, a standing or... ovation that, because you cannot stand up. It's it so sounds like it's real. It's not the Hollywood production. No, this not. is real life. It's not uh, uh, sugar cream. It's not yeah. candies. It's not, uh, no, it's a tremendous, it's, uh, it's an intellectual thing. It should be perfect thing. for yes. Moscow. It's perfect, I think so. And I hope that many people will join us. Uh, it will be a great event. And don't forget, sure if you want to go, it's on Sunday, Moscow Conservatory. Um, I March 16th. I think um, tickets are still available. For certain shows, they are completely sold out. Um, but you might be lucky. Thank you so much Thank for coming much. over. We're Thank certainly you. lucky Balance, to have you here. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. Lovely stuff. Are you excited? I am, and I'm hoping that I can get a ticket. Well, um, you might, if, if you're lucky if I'm enough. Lucky. Yeah, exactly. But it's definitely something that uh, I would like to go and see. When I spoke to the organizer, she told me that this is, it might sound a little bit scary for people who don't know opera that well just yet. Do you know but what? It she sounds told me perfect. It's perfect for it, newbies as well. It, she it sounds like an interesting story. Mm -hmm. And now that we've met the main protagonist, it just makes it even more interesting. Absolutely. So I'm very, very impressed. Uh, let's go.